Hey, welcome back to Sober Now. I'm Jim LaPierre. Today I want to talk about overcoming the fear of step four. There's an adage that my friends in AA use, which is one, two, three, drink, one, two, three, drink. To the uninitiated, that seems like a strange pattern, but it's a reference to going through steps one, two, and three, only to relapse, often very briefly, and then restart the steps. A lot of us approach step four with a lot of trepidation and anxiety. Uh, it's, it's a tough undertaking. For those who aren't familiar with 12-step programs, what we do in step four is take what's called a fearless moral inventory. And what we're looking for are resentments, past pain and anger that we've held. Um, what most people would call baggage. To me, baggage is past pain and anger, unresolved conflicts, and things that weigh me down. So ideally, the best way to lighten up would be to let go of pain and anger that we carry. But step four is this, a process of dragging the skeletons out of the closet. It's a way of looking at our past that we know may trigger us, may bring up traumatic memories, may bring up things that are just overwhelmingly sad or very, very hard to deal with. And for a lot of that, for a lot of us, it's because it's those memories are traumatic in nature. So when folks are very fearful of starting step four, my advice to them is just make a list of, of the resentments that you hold against you. Let's not dig around too much in the past or, or look at the pain that was caused to you by other people. Let's look at the things that you need to forgive yourself for. And I point out to folks quite often that withholding forgiveness creates distance in a relationship. We are often dissociative and detached from pieces of ourselves, yet our goal is to be a whole person, to be healthy, um, to have a better relationship to ourselves because that enables a better relationship to a higher power, to our friends and family. So the opportunities here are pretty huge. If we're willing to look at the resentments that we hold against ourselves, what we're going to discover is that a lot of those things are actually not our fault. We are people who have a tendency to redirect pain and anger at ourselves. We blame ourselves for things that couldn't possibly be our fault. And we did that as children because it allowed us to maintain the illusion that we had some control over our lives, over how things were going to continue to unfold. And whatever we did growing up, we continue most often to do as adults. So many of us are very uncomfortable experiencing, much less expressing anger or the vulnerability of expressing that we've been hurt, betrayed, violated. These are very difficult things for us. But I say the value of self-forgiveness is huge because it allows us to put the pieces of what we see as a broken self together. I also say that we can reconceptualize forgiving others because I think we tend to think about it as something very kind that we do for the people who hurt us. And I say that forgiveness can be selfish. I didn't do it for their benefit. I did it for my own. I was tired of carrying the weight of that anger, the weight of that pain. And so in a lot of cases, I forgave people and didn't even tell them about it. I just worked through and shared my experience with people who support me and care about me. And I think the hardest part of that was that it necessitated grieving. It necessitated that I both experience and express the pain that I carry. And when I do that in the company of good people, I get to release it. When I do it alone, I often recycle it. We need things that ensure letting go because otherwise we just re-experience and re-experience forever. So if you're approaching any type of transformation, if you're looking for opportunities to have a healthier relationship with yourself, again, that improves every relationship in your life. You get to move away from being avoidant. You get to move away from being your own worst enemy. You get to become more of the person that you want to be. And if your goal is transformation and becoming you know, your ideal self, then the bottom line is you're going to be with you 24-7, 365 for the rest of your life. So the more you invest in that relationship, the more you forgive you, and the more you start to separate what's yours and what isn't yours to carry, the better this journey is going to go. I often point out to folks that the steps are in the order that they're in for a lot of important reasons. 
but I also say that there's an opportunity. When people are approaching step four, there's two important things that I want them to do. The first one is to have a really great support system, because if we're dragging the skeletons out of the closet, it's going to be hard. And so I say to folks, you know, you're deserving and worthy of that support, and it helps us to help you. The second thing I encourage them to do is just to read Step 10 the way that it is described in the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. There's a process described there of taking a daily inventory, and this is just a few moments of introspection where we reflect on the day, literally just today. Did I take on something that doesn't belong to me? Uh, did I take on other people's pain, other people's fears, other people's problems as though they were my own? Have I done something today that I owe an amends for? Have I harmed someone today? This gives us the opportunity to not build new resentments. It gives us the opportunity to clear up misunderstandings or miscommunications with others so that they don't have to develop resentment with us. And my thought is that if we're going to go digging around for the old resentments, let's try to live in a way that ensures we're not developing new ones. This is just one more way that we get to make our lives and our recovery more manageable. So I hope you'll reflect on those things and maybe find some opportunities to really lighten up. Lighting, to lighten up in this instance means to release baggage, to take off some of the pressure that you put on yourself, and to relate to yourself in a way that is more accepting and kind. Would love to hear what your experience is with this and would love to hear questions that you have. Email me, jim at sobernow.com. Let me know how that process is going for you. Take care.